Welcome, everybody, to another episode of JRI. I'm excited to have Terry Lynch of Power Nickel back with me today to give us an update on his company. Prior to that, though, just let me briefly say as a disclaimer, right, that again, as always, not financial advice. We are not your financial advisors. There's going to be blue sky conversations here. Do your own due diligence and please read the full disclaimer in the notes below. With that out of the way, though, Power Nickel. Located in Quebec, Power Nickel's flagship NISC project is a high-grade nickel sulfide deposit positioned to be one of the greenest sources of Class I nickel in the world. With access to abundant low-carbon hydropower and easy road access, NISC is well set up to supply the battery metals market with sustainably mined, environmentally friendly, high-grade nickel. And a proven exploration thesis, Power Nickel has a strong chance of discovering economic-sized, nickel-dominant polymetallic deposits in the near future. Terry, thank you for your time. How are you today? Great, great. So, Terry, why don't I mean, yeah, this is just a quick update for people. Uh, run us through, you know, I want you to talk about phase one, two, and three of your drilling here. Uh, phase one, this is on a year ago, really not much to say, right? You're just confirming historic results. That's been taken care of. Lots of assays of lots of high-grade nickel, really economic co copper kicker, which is nice. Phase two is what you've just completed in the fall here, which, if I'm not mistaken, was about 5,500 meters. Do you mind explaining what just what did that accomplish for Power Nickel? Yeah, I mean, basically, you know, it, it allows us to really sort of, uh, you know, extend the borders of the resource and to basically, you know, move us towards thinking that we could get to that, you know, commercialized size, which in our mind, you need to be eight to 10 million tons to be commercial. And we think we can get there on this one pod. And so this, uh, this first uh, round of drilling or phase two in the, in the, uh, in, the in September to December, uh, you know, showed a lot of promise. We, we've had some, you know, very big hits and uh, and uh, helped to give us a really good understanding of where the deposit was going. And we and then we've we've carried that forward on on into phase three. So so you know, it's it's uh, generally speaking, you know, when you got a good resource, you just want to drill it out and prove it up so that you can uh, obviously it's about showing your commercial as soon as possible. Because everyone's a zero in mining business until you're a one, you know. So, <laughs> so we're trying to get to be the one again. But uh, you know, the, these are the steps you have to take to to get there. Perfect. And so, yeah, you you've extended strike. You've extended at depth. You've proven that there's more mineralization at depth that is of interest to you. Sometimes, you know, when people say open at depth, that's just a, a kind of a, an easy cop out to phrase. But for for power nickel, it's actually a very legitimate thing that. Yeah, you keep, yeah, for sure. I mean, we, we, you know, our, our best hold to date was the, um, you know, 150 meters down and away from the resource. And it was 40 meters of uh, basically, you know, 1.6% nickel EQ or, or better, actually. And uh, and some of it as high as 2.5%. So it was really a, a great hole. And, uh, and you know, it, it continues to be open at depth. And we uh, will get into the fleet technologies at some point. But, you know, when we, when we announced that, Fleet technology deal. We showed you a picture of the uh, core box for hole 23, which was mm -hmm. just done last week. Sort of along the same stretch depth, and any geologist that looked at that core box, you know, I said it's a hot nickel hole, and it really is. You know, so like I, I don't think that uh, 2209, which was our 40 meter hole, that may not be our best hole. You know, mm -hmm. I think there's there's other holes that could be competitive to that and and better. So you know, we're we're pretty excited about that. Perfect. Are there any assays remaining from phase two or is that all cleaned yeah, up? Yeah, yeah, no. So we're, we've got nine more to come on phase two. We're expecting those to be, uh, you know, fingers crossed uh, in for PDAC and, and we'll, we'll get that all out for PDAC. So uh, that would be, uh, that's if the assay gods are with us, uh, <laughs> that that would be uh, be then. And, you know, we there's at least two holes in there that we're quite excited about seeing that. Uh, not that we're, you know, there's other holes as well, but I mean, it's just like, you know, when you're drilling nickel, um, it's not like drilling gold where you really are pretty much uh, at, the, at the assay hands, uh, gods. You just don't know until you get them. But mm -hmm. nickel's a little bit better. You can definitely, some holes you get a very good feel for because the, 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 you know, the, the drill logs, you know, show, show you when you're in the mass of sulfides and, and you know, you know if it, how thick it is generally, you know, where you're targeted. So the grades should be very much in line with the, uh, grades that we're you know that we're seeing so yeah we've, we've got some bigger intersections we're quite uh, keen to get them back and see how uh, how charged they are 
Yeah, you're starting to develop a bit of a following on online retail boards, and there's a lot of excitement in people waiting for these assays. It's kind of nice to see that start to turn around. This is for your company here. Yeah, Fa- yeah, yeah. So phase three, has phase three begun? Is that initiated? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're four holes into it now. And, uh, you know, the, the what we've noticed basically is that if you look at, we're basically drilling, a, think of it as a drilling, we're in about a square kilometer right now. And, uh, you know, we're sort of, um, you know, on the west side of the of the kilometer, we've got a fault. And on the east side, we've got a fault. And sort of as we move from west to east, right now we've noticed that on the west, it sort of goes uh, left to right. If you think about it from surface down, and there's this trend, and this trend seems to be sort of, I would say, 10 to 50 meters in thickness of, of the of the good rock, and that seems to be one and a half, two percent nickel stuff, and and uh, so that's a very rich trend, and we and we, we like to sort of uh, you know test that, and, and the way to visualize for people in the audience, uh, the way I describe it is that it's a river of nickel, so rivers get wide, you know, and narrower, you know, they they get shallower and deeper, and they get clearer and cloudier. So what you're trying to do, I mean, obviously you want the widest possible river and the deepest possible river with the most cloud because that's the best grade. Now, of course, it doesn't always work like that, but you're you're always testing those extensions to try and broaden the, the deposit, right? So you, 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 if, you're, if you're not missing some holes, you're not doing your job because you, you, mm. you're trying to stretch it out. And, and so that's what we're trying to do. And what we've got is a, a river that basically flows from the surface and right now it's down to about 400 meters. And it mm-hmm. takes some twists and turns along the way, but what we found is that there's that thicker section that uh, that's quite nice on the west, and then between it there's like a thinner section that I would say is sort of like like 0. 0.6 or something, so not particularly attractive. It's okay, but it's, it's not like you know rock and roll. And mm-hmm. then 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 to the uh, east of that there's a smaller five to fifteen meter section of again one and a half two uh, percent you know good grade, and uh, yeah, so th- those are the observations we've been making about the deposit and and now we're you know we're just obviously at this stage given our market cap so small and it's incumbent upon us to prove to the market that we're commercial as quickly as possible we're really focusing on on you know putting those uh you know putting those uh, you know good assays to work you know by drilling the what we think is sort of layups and then and then you know obviously getting that updated into 43101 and oat in a disclosure and and then, and then our, our view is that once you get to that commercial phase where you show that you've got the eight to ten million tons and it's one and a half two percent you know stuff, well then you're you basically become a commercial mine and as a commercial mine you get valued quite a bit differently or you should, and, and then you start to like I just I, I look at ourselves I compare ourselves against other nickel sulfide mines you know I don't I don't compare myself against Canada nickel although we can we can talk about you know the great news that they've had recently, mm-hmm. uh, but I, I mean that's a different animal for us. I'm looking at other nickel sulfide mines like Talon Metals, you know, and and, and uh, uh, the um, Premier Nickel and, and Botswana, like all really good companies, interesting nickel pluck deposits. And they range, uh, even, you know, the Noron purchase, you know, that was basically a nickel deal. So they, they range, for, I would say, from, you know, uh, Botswana, Premier Nickel is probably 150 million US to, uh, in Noron, it's like 500 million US. And, and you know, in my mind, we're 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 in that hunt. We're with those guys. We're we're not the cheap, we shouldn't be the cheapest. We probably aren't nor not yet either. But we're somewhere in between. But we're we're twenty five million. So like we're, you know, while well, our stock's done well, and somebody said, well, your stock's done really well. I said, you know, I financed it two years ago at twenty five cents, and now it's you know today it's like thirty two or something. Hey, so that's great. It took me two years. We had to go mm-hmm. down. You know, mm-hmm. we're down to ten cents again, and we had to mm-hmm. refinance. It was like. You know, and yet nickel's tripled. We've done a hell of a job finding the ore body, and it's like, yeah, you scratch your head, you know. But, but anyway, you know, we're making progress, you know, and so we just have to keep on grinding it out, and eventually the market's going to wake up to the fact that, hey, this is going to be a, a serious nickel deposit, and you know, we, so we think it's it's an ultramafic, uh, you know, discovery. So the other ones like it in the country were Lynn Lake at 22 million tons, and Boise Bay at plus 50, and, and our scientific mm-hmm. team thinks we'll be somewhere in there, 20 to 50 million tons. And, that's a billion dollar deposit. Anyway, you look at it. so mm-hmm. it's a, it's exciting. 
Yeah, it's hard not to be exciting. And, and you know, I think that your the body language of your company is denoting a lot of confidence with your work. Initially, this phase three was supposed to be 5,000 meters. In the fall, you had upped it to 15,000. And now, if I'm not mistaken, as of the last news release, you're starting to bandy around this idea of up to up to 40,000 meters. Obviously, you know, as a regional investors or just investors in general, when they see, I mean, 5,000 meters is a decent drilling program, but 40,000 meters obviously denotes that you're taking something very seriously there. And there's a great deal of confidence in where you're putting your money to be to be initiating that. Do you maybe just want to discuss that? Maybe like, what did you see that made you want to talk about that? Or yeah, just yeah. Just... I mean, basically, what we did. I mean, we we we've publicly said we're we're upping it to fifteen thousand, and then the the forty thousand meter is a reflection of we we did a, you know, we're obviously in the green business. We're we're in the electrification. We're we're, we're trying to, you know, uh, be you know suppliers to the electric vehicle industry. So as part of sort of being a good corporate citizen there, we think it's sort of incumbent upon us to where we can to be as environmentally friendly as we possibly can be. Mm-hmm. So we think we can create the probably the greenest nickel mine in history. Part of that process is to do carbon offsets for our drilling. Mm-hmm. So uh, basically when you're drilling, you're consuming diesel because that's how you pretty much fire everything when you're drilling. So we know what that is. And, and what we did was we used, we found this you know, really great company called Carbon X and, and they, uh, uh, we ended up, doing a, a, you know, an agreement with them to offset what we thought would be, what would be our maximum drill program in 2023. And, and we, we basically said probably 40,000 meters. And so the first, this 15,000 plus maybe another 25,000 in the summer. And so that's what we offset. Now we haven't formally come out and said that mm-hmm. because unless you had money, it'd be sort of irresponsible to do that. But we did, you know, it wasn't that expensive with, I don't know, 10 grand or something in that range to, to offset that, uh, you know, and, you know, and, and I think obviously our, our Aboriginal partners like it. The ESG funds like to see that we're thinking that way, and we're we're not just like we're we're, we're getting in front of the the environmental thing and, and trying to be you know walk the walk, uh, you know, just talk the talk. So uh, mm-hmm. so that's where that math comes from. Mm, thank you. And you're you're right though. You're positioning yourself to be in that emerging conversation about green energy and, and the green life cycle of these minerals from exploration to end use, right? And so I think that it's a very Prudent, like you say, not a, not a, not a huge commitment on your part right now, but it, it places your company in that conversation in a way that's going to matter more and more as years go on here. So I think that's a really interesting, really interesting choice for you to make. That's not your only piece of news in terms of agreements, though. Do you mind want to do you want to walk us through what Fleet Space Technologies is and what it offers to Power Nickel? Yeah, I mean, a very interesting company. Uh, we uh, one of my shareholders actually flagged it to me, um, mm. yeah, and and he said, Terry. I, you know, he, he sent me a, you know, a press release from Talon Metals. He said, what do you think of this? Uh, I read it and it, was, and it was their deal with, with fleet. And I thought, well, I never heard of that before, you know? So I thought being the curious type that I am and having a big chunk of my family fortune tied up in this, I, I called them and, and fleet technologies and, and got educated as to what they had. And, and, um, you know, I'm, I'm not a geologist, I'm not a scientist. I don't want people to think that. So, uh, you know, I'm just a business guy trying to make a dollar and, and uh, for myself and my, my shareholders. And, and so I was impressed with their science and I read their white papers and did that, but I thought, well, I'm, I'd probably be a pretty relatively easy guy to fool on the science. So so I, I brought in GeoVector, who are our team, uh, Joe Campbell and Adam Finley and, and Ken Williamson from 3 dgo who are, who are very sharp scientists and are not easily fooled. And, and uh, they were quite skeptical at first. And I said, guys, look, I get you're skeptical, but look, I'm, I'm, I'm not telling you what to tell me because I'm hiring you to give me your professional opinion and, and I'm going to follow your advice because what do I know? That's why I'm paying you the big bucks. Mm. But I, I said, I do want you to get learned and I'm happy to pay for you to get learned because I, I, I got educated on it. And, you know, and the Talon Metals team is the top technical team. They didn't do it as a stock promo. They did it because they thought it was going to help them find more nickel sooner. And that's what I want to do. So, so they, they actually went and did their homework and we had, you know, I guess several meetings with them and their technical team. And, and they, they they took a lot of time and really did a great job educating our, uh, our, our scientists that, you know, how it could be used and how it could, you know, speed up our discovery process, reduce our amount of dry holes and reduce the amount of disturbance we have to do with the earth, all of good things, you know, so, um, and all good things that will save us money and increase our profitability in the near term. So, Based on that, we, we signed up with them and we'll, we'll start to uh, put this program in place. And basically what it is, is 
think of it, it's <laughs> bad, bad. I guess if you away, but it looks like little landmines, you know. But it, they they put these, you know, these little gizmos that look like landmines, you know, sort of on the uh, on the earth. They spread them out uh, about a hundred meters apiece, and um, and eat in every direction. And then uh, you basically uh, what it does is they they're wirelessly connected and they're hooked up to a satellite. This Elon Musk basically put them up with SpaceX, and that's that's how it got the Talon metals was through I think the Musk connection, and then then uh, they with, with with the data transfer within four days you actually start to get a visualization of your deposit. So it, where they're really effective, from what we've been able to decipher, is when you have an existing deposit that you know scientifically is there. So, I mean, we've drilled this, we've got assays and core, so we know what's down there. This is not a mystery, that's science. So now they correlate that, uh, basically this this ambient noise technology is sort of like sonar, but like 10 times more sensitive. So they, they, they're able to effectively, uh, based on that, develop numbers for various thicknesses of materials and, and material types. And then they correlate that to the data you already know is true because you've already drilled it. And then, then that gives them a, a 3D visualization of your deposit. And then within that, you know, you, you obviously two things happen. One, you sort of see, you know, possibly what areas you've missed in your deposit that maybe you can add on. Uh, possibly if the deposit is stacked, in other words, this is like, our deposit at 300 meters, but this thing sees down to 2,000. So is it possible there's a stack system? Don't know. Be nice to know. Uh, and then the other thing is, obviously, once you've got a model of of what the pay dirt looks like in this particular area, then you then you take those geodes, expand it over. We're just searching over one square kilometer right now, but we have 45 square kilometers there. So then you put it over the, your 45 square kilometer package, and you're looking for similar results, right? Because and then where you find those results, well, then obviously you know we do other things like gravity and seismic just to confirm it. And then you then you went and drill. I mean, drilling it's it's sort of like carpentry. You know, measure twice and cut once, right? You, you, drilling is a very expensive thing. We have to do it at the end of the day, but you want to do it with as much conviction as possible. So so that's that's why we're doing uh, the fleet technology deal. Exciting. I have a couple of follow-up questions. Just to clarify, so it is proven technology where Talon Metals has discovered ex- increasing or adv- or con- uh, additional co- uh, nickel mineralization with this technology? That's my understanding, yep. Yeah, that's exciting, eh? And, and they, then, yeah. they definitely made discoveries in Chile, or not Chile, but in, um, in Western Australia, in copper and in lithium. And it was interesting because... Uh, you know, you know, as they were, you know, obviously I got on there with NISC and that was my primary focus. And then they, they were talking about West Australia and I said, because I know West Australia a little bit, never, never did. Yeah, I've, I've been invested down there. I haven't like actually done work there, but I know they have Caliche in West Australia. So Caliche is sort of this mineralized limestone that's, that's in sand dunes that obstructs gravity and seismic signals. Mm. So it makes it hard in the mm. desert to get really good intel. So what happens, the reason why the deserts have been largely Underexplored is it's bloody expensive to mm. to figure this stuff out. So um, apparently, uh, this it doesn't get obstructed by Kalichi. So that's a game changer. And after we uh, use it at NISC, uh, we plan. You know, I, I think I've told you that we plan to spin out our our copper gold uh, into its own entity, and and then you know do that. And I think that'll happen. So so by the time we're done with this at NISC. We'll be taking that down to Chile and putting it to work in our, our uh, you know, huge land projects down there. We have four, we have three sort of uh, 4,000, 6,000, 8,000 hectare spots, you know, that will put this to work and hopefully develop, uh, you know, it could be a breakthrough uh, technology for Chile. Hmm. No, very exciting. So, yeah, you know, you, you have a whole bunch of very interesting um catalyst coming your way i guess maybe the one question i wanted to to ask you prior to maybe having you give us a recap of what the market can expect is with the with your fifteen thousand meters plus campaign here in 2023 obviously you reference that you know most of it's going to be going towards commercializing this one pod and improving commerciality of this one pod absolutely what are you, could you maybe just give a rundown of where else what else are you what are you hoping to achieve or accomplish are you going to do more wildcat exploration and try to find other pods or is that for another season yeah, no, no. I mean, basically, this this program uh, this winter, uh, I think we've got a couple of winter targets. I.e., there'd be easier to access mm-hmm. by drilling through the ice. 
So, uh, you know, so we're not going to drill them extensively, but we will throw a probe in there in each in each of those, um, you know, that we, you know, areas that we like and think could be interesting. So we'll, we'll, we'll definitely do that. But generally speaking, you know, you know, while I'm a gambler, if you have to be a gambler to be in this business, I'm a really conservative gambler. So it's like I've got a resource. I'm adding to it. So I'm, I'm piling up those chips because, you know, I don't need to go all in. I don't have to I don't have to force the hand, right? I let the hand come to me. The technology will help us find other pods. You know, nickel sulfide mines always are multiple pod. We'll find some other pods here, mm. I believe. And we'll find them with this good technology and good science. And mm. uh, we don't have to rush it. We're going to do these uh, these winter probes because it's it's you know, it makes sense because otherwise we'd have to wait a whole other year. Uh, so we'll learn some intel by doing that and hopefully get lucky and strike it. But but we're not going to chase that stuff aggressively mm-hmm. until we have the good science. Nope, perfect. And like you say, you're completely correct. I remember this from our last conversation. Wait, one pod begets multiple pods. And yeah, Power Nickel, I mean, this is one of my favorite stories. I'm, I'm excited to see what transpires. This seems like it could be an absolutely... Uh, like a catalyst or a very formative year for your company in terms of news flow and in terms of just what exactly you're going to prove to the market. Do you maybe just want to run through, you know, 2023, what are some things that we might expect to see from you? Yeah. So, so I would say, you know, as investors, what you should be watching for is a, obviously, you know, look at our story now, go to our site, you know, check out our, 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 our PowerPoint there. That I think it lays it out quite nicely. There's Investor Intel's got a great site on us that, that I think does a good job of laying things out in an independent way. And it can it can help you sort of get educated as to where we are relative to our peers, because when you when you invest in in stocks, you know you got to be you know I'm a, I'm a value guy. I, I like to buy value first, where I feel like hey I like the space I want to be in the sector I like, and then I want the most uh, risk return uh, you know beneficial for me, I can find, in other words, the mm-hmm. least risk, the most possible return. Mm-hmm. So I would say right now that's power nickel. And when you compare it, you'll get to that feeling. If you, if you do your homework, at least I feel you will. And then what, what's going to change it, you have to say, well, how are they going to change? Cause it, it's like, if you're a great value stock, but you're not doing anything to get changed, who cares? Cause nobody's going to find you. So what I'm, what we're doing to change it is we've got the assets. We've, we spent the money that's coming. You know, we're, we're going to do an upgrade at 43101. That's coming. So so there are real catalysts that are paid for, that are coming, that will change how the market perceives us. You know what I mean? And, um, you know, that's that's what's exciting as an investor. You want to get in front of that. You know, you know and, and, and I say for right now, you, you're able to buy for almost like the same price that we did two years ago. And now nickel's tripled. We mm-hmm. found a boatload more resource. It's, uh, it looks like we've got some technology that can help us even find more. And it's like, it doesn't get much better than this. No, and I, yeah, absolutely, I agree. Like you talk about that that relationship between risk and reward, and I feel that that is where Power Nickel really does excel, is that this it's asymmetrical, right? That you have all this de-risk thesis, you have cash in the bank, you're ready to drill, you have already you have a valuation that is already smaller than what it should be based on what you have on the ground, and you have so much more prospectivity. So no, like I say, this is this is one of my one of my favorite juniors, and one I think a lot of people around the industry are starting to kind of shoulder tap as one to watch. One final question here. Just had from a from a from a viewer, someone who wanted me to ask you this. When can we, so whole twenty three is getting a little little online. It's getting a little bit of uh, momentum behind it, right? Just people are curious when we might expect to see the assays so for that. Whole twenty three would be basically, oh, I think it was about uh, a week ago, right? So uh, ten to twelve weeks. So that's that's when that would come. A yeah. couple months, yeah. and so yeah. Otherwise, I mean, twenty twenty three. I would say, we, you know, perceptively between now and then, we've got better stuff than whole twenty three. <laughs> you know, that'd be my guess. Well, I'm yeah. excited. I can't wait to see it. And yeah, so you, constant news flow, right? You constant news flow throughout the rest of the year. Lots of meters to come. Lots of things that will be yeah, com- company defining and a potential very exciting inflection point. And yeah, like you say, it's at this point trading at 30 cents today still is pennies on the dollar for what it could be or what it might what they might say it should be, right? So, yeah. uh, Terry, final thoughts to you? Yeah, no, I mean, we're, we're just, uh, you know, we're just going to keep on pounding away. And the one thing I would, I, I'd leave you with is that, is that, uh, I, I've, I've been talking with, you know, a major nickel processing company, multi-billion dollar company, and they would ordinarily be buying from, you know, you know, Glencore or Rio Tinto or Wailu, but now to secure the contracts that they want to secure with the Department of Defense and with the battery manufacturers, the automotive suppliers, 
they need to secure their nickel supply. So they're 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 now coming leapfrogging the guys they used to deal with, and they're coming to companies like Power Nickel and saying, "Hey, how about we we partner with you? How about you know because if you get in the nickel powder and anode and fine wire business, you don't just get LME. You get LME on the powder side plus six plus fourteen, and up to plus one twenty five. Mm. You spend um, basically." The capex for the nickel mine might be two hundred million to move into the powders and and anodes and fine wire is more like about three fifteen three fifty, triple through economics. So you're you're looking at being able to maybe partner with these guys. Like I've always thought, hey, what I would just find you know the nickel, prove that it's you know mineable and de-risk it, and then sell it to the you know the Glen Course or White Loser, and maybe that's what happens at the end of the day. I'm not precluding that, and they're fine companies. But what's interesting, and what they said to me is that you got to remember now, uh, as a nickel class one supplier in North America, you got a seat at the poker table. You're not mm. just a dumb commodity guy anymore. You can trade up. So interesting stuff. So I mean, so there's got great potential, just you know, on the commodity discovery side of things, but there's great potential on the business discovery things. So it's interesting times. Hmm. No, absolutely. Well said. And I, I think we'll keep it there, right? Short and sweet. Terry, thank you for your time. Head over to powernickel.com if you want to learn more and see why people such as myself are very excited about Terry's company here. Terry, thank you for your time. Great. Thanks. Cheers for now. Uh, Bye. Yeah, have a good day.